we are about to have a conversation. favorite digital entertainment news and talk show that airs on the social media streets. We air simultaneously on Facebook and YouTube. And the way that you can know when we are live on Facebook and YouTube, you text the word Larry Live with no spaces to 33222. Text the word Larry Reed Live with no spaces to 33222. All right, I want to tell you um, something. I had an interesting conversation early, early this morning. Well, it was soon after I woke up, it was, so it might not have been that early. But in a darn way, so let me tell you, number one, an HIV story, and then I want to tell you, will give you my commentary on a post that I just made that you guys are already starting to respond on. So here's the HIV story. Are you guys ready? Well, there was this young guy, well, he wasn't young, we were young-minded, that I had spoke to probably about a year and a half. Oh, I'm going to tell you two HIV stories. Okay, let me tell you this first one now involving a lesbian. Okay, so this mom, who's a very churchy mom, this happened in 2017, and I've done a video on it, some of you may remember. A very churchy, churchy, Jesus, Jesus, Christian mom. And her daughter is or was a lesbian. Well, I was coaching her at the time, which means she had paid thousands upon thousands of dollars for me to coach her for a three-month period. And so in my coaching program, when I was doing it, probably, I may have started up 2023, but I can't take home more than 10 people at a time. But... um we go through every aspect, every role that you play, not just an, as an entrepreneur or maybe an author or artist, but your role as mom, dad, or whatever. So as a mom, we're just dealing with some things. And she told me that her daughter was same gender loving. And so when she told me her daughter was same gender loving, the way that she told me I discerned, okay, it's going to be a whole issue. But I continue to let her talk. And... Long story short, I told her what she needed to do with her daughter was that she needed to love her daughter, be there for her daughter, and just stay out of conversations about the way that she likes to have sex. Of course, the mom could not allow the God in her to sit quiet with the devil in her daughter. So she took a different approach and Lots of oil been poured down her daughter's throat, on her head, consistently praying and screaming, hollering, rebuking the spirit of homosexuality. And so by the next time we had our session, um, I asked her about the relationship and how it was doing. And she said to me that her daughter is still holding on to the spirit and will not let her go. So I began to have a conversation with her that challenged her belief system. Because there's something in Christianity that makes the followers believe that it is their duty to make sure everybody around them believe and share the same convictions that they share. And it's part of their them being saved and they can't sit quiet or not have an opinion or push their point of view on somebody else. And to not do so is like compromising, you know. It's some kind of psychosis that is taught and um, really, 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 really is an issue. I call it church brain. It's literally a mental illness. It's a social illness as well, church brain. So anyway, so she took that approach. She, she loved me all the way up until this point. And everything I ever prophesied to her came to pass. Every homework assignment I ever gave to her, it was profitable. She was doing well. 
but there was this issue. Cause I, be, I told her this, and I'm going to say this here, and I know people are going to take this and do whatever they want to with it. But I told her this. I said to the mom, your daughter's homosexuality, God has n- no concern about it. And she couldn't receive it. And this is a woman who has a prophetic gift too. And she never knew that her daughter was a lesbian. So my question to her was, why God never told you that your daughter was a lesbian if this is something that you know is going to send her to hell, you know it's something that's going to destroy her life? How come God never told you nothing about it and you're a prophet? I said, could it be that it's your concern and not his, that he's more concerned about her speaking the truth, keeping her word, being a great American citizen, loving herself and others? Could it be that you're more concerned about this religiously and it's not a spiritual issue. Okay, so that's where we bump heads at and then all of a sudden I'm the devil. And I told her, well, the way that you're handling your daughter, what is going to happen, your daughter is probably going to choose a path she probably would not have chosen if you had been a supportive and loving parent. Three months later, I heard from her crying, 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 telling me that her daughter had left home, went to the home of a older, more mature lesbian who happened to also dual as a pimp. But of course, her daughter didn't see that as bad because her mama was the devil to her and was treating her wrong. So this woman who was a pimp, she embraced this woman. Long story short, she got addicted to drugs. She got pregnant by one of her Johns. Um, She ended up not being able to work no more. She got on drugs, HIV positive. Came back home. And now the mama's finding out all this stuff and she's going crazy. So guess what's the first thing I said to the mama? The first thing I said to the mama was, this is your fault. I said, you created, she was, cause she was trying to put everything on the devil. I said, why are you trying to put this on the devil for? This is all you. You did this. This is what you did. And I told your hand how to handle your daughter. You believed I was your coach and prophet in every other area, but this here, you didn't listen. And now you got this bullshit you got to deal with. So you're going to sit right there in there. A prophet, you know, is there a seed that I can sow? So you can sow a seed and I pray. I mean, but I just need to give you the reality of what I said. That seed need to be some repentance attached to that seed. Need to be a penitent seed. I said because you you don't went the wrong way, and I had told you. So there's that. The other HIV story is this. There's a young man about last year I talked to online. I I didn't have my personal number. And but I allowed I would answer his DMs, <clears throat> and he had moved from the cut, the country somewhere. He was saying gender loving, moved from the cut, and he moved to Atlanta. Now, although he in Atlanta, and we had been talking about it, yeah, that don't mean we go sit down and eat. <clears throat> Let me tell y'all something. I am a lover of people, and if you ever met me in the street, I'm gonna open my arms, I'm gonna hug you, liably kiss you. I just love people, but. I'm not so quick and fast to be friends. There are a few such times I have, but that's not my norm. And so he moved to Atlanta, had got into Atlanta life, you know, learning all the different things that Atlanta has to offer. And so he found out, oh my God, you know, people here, everybody got AIDS, everybody got HIV. Oh my God, I'm never doing anything here. I'm never, you know, so he was very critical of this area. Well, I also have a place in Miami. So he came to Miami for, what was that they had? I can't remember what it, what it was. But he came to Miami, and in Miami, he let his hair down. He was in his garden because of all the rumors and things he had heard about Atlanta. So. In his mind, Atlanta was the worst thing in the world when it comes to STIs and STDs. Well, I told him when he got back from Miami, he hit me up. I said, how was Miami? He said, well, I had a time down there. You know, he was just talking about all the things he did. I said, 
I said, you know, you need to be careful in Miami. He said, no, I need to be careful in Atlanta. I said, no, that's the rumors. Atlanta is, uh, Miami is, is number one when it comes to STIs, HIV, and things of that nature. And I said, um, you need to be careful. He said, well, I was not careful, and I'm okay. Months later, he tells me he's HIV positive because he was in Miami and not in Atlanta where there's a lot of AIDS and disease. I say, you know, it's interesting how just not being well read and reading and researching stuff on your own can cause you to make decisions that are detrimental to your mental, emotional, financial, and physical health. And I want to say this. We're, we all are doing it. We may not end up with HIV, but if you're not doing the research that you need to need to do, you're not going to know how to p- posture yourself when it comes to certain ills or certain happenings and situation conditions in our community. Because, bruh, what if you, a lot of you won't follow me when I was telling y'all putting a mask on before we even received the mask mandate or there was any talk of mask in the U.S. That was February 2020. I remember I also told you guys in 2015 that the church needed to build their identity on in cyberspace because in 2020 the church was going to change forever. And now we see that the church has changed forever. It will never be what it was prior to pandemic. And People are catching up. See, just not knowing the right person and not getting the right information can literally mean a a low quality or less than what is supposed to be quality of life for yourself. And it's all because your nose is not in the right book and you're not connected to the right person. And just like how it is being connected to the right person can take you somewhere, being connected to the wrong person can fuck your life up mentally, emotionally, financially, physically, spiritually. Fuck it. And so, you need if you happen to be connected to somebody that got some good sense, and maybe somebody that got a special thing on them, and they tell you X, Y, Z. Listen to what the hell they saying. Ethelina today I read my parents. Ethelene will come up. Uh, were they wrong on some things? Yes. But really the thing they were wrong on, I think it was meant for them to be wrong on so that I can hear the voice of the Lord to tell me to do the opposite of what they told me. Because there was a payout for that. But aside from that thing, everything else that they said was the truth. Your parents don't be wrong. If I had listened to my mom... Uh, the story I told y'all about um, getting drugged and raped as a teenager, I was 17. If I had listened to my mama, that would have never happened to me. Never. Because she told me that them people were the devil and won't write. There was somebody else that ended up having a soul tie with for years. They ended up introducing a lot of junk, even just really right here and right here. My mama told me not to fool up with them, and I fooled up with them. There was somebody my mama told me to stay away from around. I happened to listen to her with that. And now that person is strung out on drugs. That could have easily been me because I'm addictive anyway. If I got one piece of taste of that drug, I probably went ham down the road with that thing. And I wouldn't be sitting here right now. So I want you to pay attention to the advice, the point of view that the person nearest you have told you that you don't like. That's probably something you need to listen to, or at least consider. My mama was right. My mama was right. My mama was right. My mama was right. Mm -hmm. All right, so enough for the HIV stories. All right, so let me tell you um, commentary on this last post that I made, um, where it's the... Eight at the table. I love following them. You should follow them. I love the conversation that they have. That format is very similar to the type of conversation I'm going to be having on OnlyFans. I'm about to do an interview with this man who most of the ladies will see. But, oh, my God, he's so beautiful, so nice. You know, he's going to tell the penis size. I, I hate to tell you and report that I do know the penis size. I'll tell that story over there and tell you how I know. 
thought it was not supposed to happen, but I grabbed this phone. But anyway, and um, so I'm going to tell you that story and what happened to him, how his girlfriend turned him all the way out. And it's going to shock you. I ain't never heard a uh, story like it, but he agreed to it. So um, and he is an ex-professional football player. So he is going to come with me on my OnlyFans and have that conversation before the end of the month. Before the end of the month. So and it probably happened right after Christmas if we can't work it in this week. All right. So anyway, so remember, anybody else got the testimony that your, your mama was right? Mama was right. She was right. So the conversation that they have over there, eight at the table, is really dope. I really enjoy their conversation. So let me tell you, this one sound cap, I need to hear that story. Listen, I couldn't believe it. But then when I look at what's happening in our world and listen to my children, their friends and their stories, this, there's probably so many men with that kind of story, but we just ain't never heard it, and he's going to tell it, so I can't wait for that. But anyway, let me tell you the post that I made. Listen to what this lady says, and then we're going to discuss it. It's not a reward. Being a woman of leisure is a reward. Well, that's the same thing. No, they're not. No, they're not. If you're a woman of leisure, if you are a woman of leisure, you don't have responsibilities. Your responsibility is being... A woman of leisure. If you are a housewife, you maintain and you manage the house. That's not a fucking reward. It's a job. Whether it's only 20 hours a week is still a job. If, no if, if you're if you trying to reward me because I was there through the tough times, let me be a woman of leisure. Let me be a kept woman. That is a reward. Rewarding me with washing dishes is not a fucking reward. Okay, I want to talk about this. Um, and I'm, I'm probably going to keep this live up right here. And then probably share it on Facebook and YouTube. If you're watching it right now on YouTube and Facebook, I'm in the comment section nine times out of ten. Now, this is very interesting to me. And I love that it came from a woman and not from a man. Because what I notice is there's this thing that is happening, not just in church, but it's happening throughout our culture of men telling women how they need to be. Do I feel like sometimes men need to make certain statements to women, yes. But ultimately, I feel as though an evolved, woke woman should begin to teach other women. And that is how they will learn to be the best manifestation of themselves. Now, when it comes to knowing who we are, you need to listen to another a man talk about that. Um, my baby mama came in here yesterday to show me a gift that she had got my papa son, which is Shamako and Latrice's son. And when she showed, showed him, I said, this ain't it. And she said, what you mean? I said, this is not right. And so then I called, Kendall was in here, and I said, show it to Kendall, and Kendall said the same thing, no, this not going to work. And she said, but it's so nice. And he didn't, she had worked it out in her head why this gift is so important. And I had to tell her straight, it's a miss. When it comes to men, ladies, please hear me, please. Who please hear me, women, please. Do not listen to your girlfriend about what's going on with your man and how the relationship is and try to get her to, you know, be your sounding board when it comes to how to deal with this man, whether it's your man, your husband, or your son, him. You don't need me listening. You don't know. You go find a man and ask the man because you do not know. And let me say this. I often say that women are much smarter than men. You are exactly right, Larry Reed. I don't care what any man in here says. But when it comes to men, that is every woman's dumb spot. The smartest woman I've ever seen in my life, the most powerful woman, they still got that dumb part that a stupid, no good, shysty can walk right on through and get her every single time. 
This is why every woman on my live right now, there are over 200 of you watching me, I need for you to find you a male friend. Male. Not trans man. A male. Born a male and lived the life of a, of a man. They got all of the all of the parts. And really a man here as well. You know, because man woman is, you know, state of mind. But because you need to bounce some stuff off them because you don't know shit. When it comes to men, I'm going to say it again. Have I said women are smarter than men? Absolutely. But this is their dumb part. Niggas. So, you don't, women, listen, you don't know shit when it comes down to a man. I'm, I'm going to say it one more time. Oh, Lord. Maybe, I wish there was a way I could take a bull horn and take. You don't know shit. You don't. Men. If you got a woman in your life and you talking to your other man about this woman, go find, call your mama. Call one of your aunties. A woman who, women know women. And ladies, men know men. You don't know shit when it comes down to a man. I feel Jeremy waking up. You do not. And a man that talks to you exclusively by himself, just you and him, has power, control, and influence over you. And they have your emotional attention and they have your emotional prowess, savvy, and power. You have no power when it comes to that man. Thank you for the bad salty SD. You do not. Because in, we isolate you and talk to you. Your mom, who was the beginning of the creation of this world, Eve, as smart and powerful as she was, she listened to a snake. And there is a hearing in you for a snake. Uh, you have a listening for a hissing. Let me say it again. You have a listening for a hissing. And it becomes like a charm to you. Unless you got a man in your life that you can trust. Who don't, really, who don't want you. Let me make sure that's clear. Because you be ran away from one snake to a predator. A man that don't want you. Who don't, don't win or lose. If you, if you win or lose. Who going to tell you. You're a dumbass mother from talking to this shy over here who don't know shit. You, you, I'm trying to tell you, thank you, Jancy Lady today. Thank you. Thank you. The women are sending me um, <laughs> badges. That, that, that means they're they feeling this. They're feeling this. I'm telling y'all the truth. Right? I, mean, I, I want to see everybody win. You know, so I ain't got no ulterior motive. You, you can't. You can't. You have to measure that man. And the only way you can stay in measurement is that your emotions are not involved. If who you are with and dealing with, you know your emotions are involved. You're not the right person to make any decisions, make any kind of, kind of valuations when it comes to that man. It needs to be somebody whose emotions are not involved. Who can remind you who you are, what you worth, what you say you want, what you say you do not want, the future that you want for yourself. You know, that's, that's the kind of thing that you need. So I don't need to say that before I get into what this girl said on 8 at the table. She said this. She said, I done played it for those of you coming in. This is what she said. She said that... Thank you, Sabrina Smith Foster, for sending me the badge. Somebody said, you telling the truth is real is rough, Larry. Roz, I believe you're hearing me because you said it's rough, Larry. Because that's, that's real talk. So that lets me know that you're dating at least one man who has your attention. And what I'm saying to you right now is sort of make you know, Roz, I may got myself in a situation. And you're saying it's rough. So that sounds like a real feedback. That sounds really real. But it lets me know that you're hearing hearing me. 
You cannot trust your emotions and your feelings from isolated conversations and time that you've had with that one person. You do not know that man. Let me tell you how we are. And let me get to what the girl said. We are hunters. We like to possess and have exclusively our property. Y'all talk to share. We're not talk to share. When y'all are being raised as, as little girls, you're taught to give of yourself and your time and to care. Ain't none of that in a man's upbringing and teaching. So when it comes to you guys, it's possession. It's power. Mine. You're mine. So we will say whatever we need to say. We will do whatever we need to do. And we learn from you because you talk too darn much. <laughs> oh, my God. You talk too darn much. And you end up telling us what you like, what you do not like. We become all of that. We say what needs to be said. We do what needs to be done. We listen to you talk about how the relationship won't right. We measure up and feel that so that we can get you. And once we get you, later on, you're going to start finding out who we really are. But all the way up until we get you, whether that is you moving in our home or we got you paying some of our bills or we marry you and put a ring on you. Once we get you, that's when you're going to find out. But that's that's in a heterosexual or homosexual relationship. You remember who men are. I'm telling you what I know. This is not hypothetical. What I'm saying is the truth. Somebody else may tell you something that's true too. But in, if I tell you that it's the truth, just like y'all learned about some of the stuff I say concerning this last thing, but what's the name? I told y'all a couple months, this is going to be in Bam Dad. We'll, and everything else I've said, the pandemic and the, the churches in 2020. I don't miss. And when I do, I come alive and I say, I miss that. But I'm telling you the truth. Once we get you, then you start finding out who we are. That we're a little controlling. That we're a little insecure. That we're a little lazy. That we lie a little bit. <laughs> uh, not as integral as we need to be. So, let me tell you this. Remember, I told you. All right, getting back to what this lady said. Okay, this lady said... She said there's a difference between a housewife and a woman of leisure. She's absolutely, positively telling the truth. And let me say this to each and every one of you that are watching that are women. That are fortunate enough to be in a situation to where your man can take care of you. Um, if you have to choose between housewife and woman of leisure. Now this it's going to make somebody mad and upset. But I'm going to say it anyway. If you have to choose between being a woman of leisure and a housewife, choose woman of leisure. Uh, the woman of leisure doesn't have to do anything but chase her goals, her dreams, and make sure that her significant others is consistently coming and nutting and coming and nutting. That's emotionally, physically, mentally. That's your job to please and provide pleasure for your significant other. And just be your fabulous self. Take the black card. Enjoy your life and your friends. But don't give nobody else that puss. It's mine. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? Choose that. Be a woman of leisure. And enjoy your whole life. Thank you, Mr. Grinnan. And enjoy your home, whole, whole life. Now, it comes with responsibility. Your puss don't belong just to you. It also belongs to that man and you must bust it wide open over to and over to and over to again and make sure that he's drained of all of his cum and nut using your puss maybe even your bus definitely your muss muss puss bus muss puss bus 
you use all three of them to just extrapolate semen from the very center of his soul and make sure his will is lost and thine, yours. That's what you're supposed to be doing. Woman of leisure. That ain't no hard job. You know, y'all can fake it. Unless you got some dryness situation, you can always bust it open. Even you real feel like this is fake. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. This fake. We want to know. Do a couple of shivers. Go to acting school. Do whatever you got to do. Choose woman of leisure. Did you hear what I said? I'm telling you what truth is. And then, let's look at the housewife. The housewife got cheering. The housewife probably paying bills. Making sure the maintenance men are called and the the the, the landscaping people, the the people come get the trash. You know? The children got to get to school on time. That's a job, and that thing might not pay. You know, being a housewife, your paycheck could be the husband paying all the bills, but you ain't really getting no no allowance because he he ain't making money to afford it. But a woman of leisure, you you see you see the difference here. One got to work using her whole body, her mind, her hands, and menial tasks. And the other woman just got to bust it open. Muss. Puss. Bus. That's the booty puss. The proper puss. And the mouth puss. And just extrapolate the semen. That's all you got to do. Let's choose woman of leisure. I'm, I'm trying to help you. Choose woman of leisure. Now let me tell you the downside of being a woman of leisure. <clears throat> you probably is the main chick. If y'all living together and stuff, you probably the main chick, but you ain't the only one. Because usually a woman of leisure is probably going to be connected to a man who has the means to have out for you. <laughs> so as a woman of leisure, your girlfriends are going to be your best friends. Your mom, your children are going to be, if you got children, are going to be your, you know, your best, your nanny, you know, maybe the gardener, maybe the pool boy. These are going to be your emotional Mainstays, not him. It ain't always like this. Sometimes that woman of leisure can have a man devoted just her. If she if she busting it right, muss, puss, bus, and great conversation, and she a cheerleader, oh, she'd be all right. Now, if you got your woman of leisure on lock, that man ain't gonna want to have two and three of you, but he he probably do. So you're gonna have to like emotionally satisfy yourself some other kind of way, cause you will not be the only one. It's just how it is. It's, it's unfortunate, but it's true. Now, what I'm telling you on this here live is the truth. It may not feel nice, it may not be good, but I just needed to get this off my chest. When I heard that woman say what she said, I said it's a great conversation. Choose woman of leisure. Now. Now let's have a uh, spiritual, churchy conversation about all that. Because that's what I, I say to everybody. Now, as a pastor and as a father, this is what I will say to women. Oh, my God. I don't believe I'm going to say this, but I'm going to say it. Get you five boyfriends minimum. This is this is somebody gonna take this and, and have fun with this. Women do have you five boyfriends until one of them sh show up as a husband. Make that man your husband and be married as husband and wife in the sight of the Lord. Have you two point five children to get you a house with a picket fence. But the road to that is not exclusively dating. One person after the next. Mm -mm, no, you're going to waste years of your life. You're going to find your mate in your 50s or 60s. Mm -mm. Give them the best piece of your puss. That's a, like a 30 to 40, right before 50s puss. That's the... Mm. 
the sweetest pussy in the world. Do not waste that exclusively dating. You need to date five minimum. And if you can't find five minimum, they'll let you know right there you're not ready for marriage. Because a wife is a high-value woman. You know, we, we, we wife and women that's... that's and if you ain't got, you can't have five niggas running behind you, wanting your sweet nectar. If you can't, if you don't, if you can't, if you don't have that, you 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 ain't even worth wifing. Date your five five niggas. Date five, and then to one of them is gonna rise up as the one you should be open to becoming his wife. I, yes, I said date five. I did not say six five. I said date five. So what about women over 50? That thing's still good. I'm just saying the, the sweetest part of your pussy is that late 30s, 40s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now there's some men I did that like the young, the young stuff because of the youngest. My analytical mind can't help but think about how crazy the young girls is. So I just, there's nothing that excites me about young puss. Or young puss. Not at all. Um, you've had five husbands, you, you retired by choice. You know why? Because you always dated exclusively. That's why. You should never date exclusively. They blowing off the terrace. Y'all hear that? You end up with like five or six husbands. You you date exclusively. And a lot of women, you're raised to date exclusively. That's why I, a man, need to come tell you, don't do yourself like that. Don't do that. Right. Dating does not always mean sexually active. You have to make men jump through hoops to get to that. And they will. We will. Because we're hunters by nature. We will. Mystic said her pussy is still right and tight. I know that's right. Especially you doing some proper exercises and eating proper. You keep it moist and tight. I'm a woman of leisure now, Larry. I think I need a class. You probably do. Probably do. Get you a, a woman of leisure mentor and a, and a smart man. A high level of some, a man that generates multiple millions a year, their brain is different than a man that generates a hundred thousand a year. Those are two different men. So you're gonna need somebody like me to advise you if you're a woman of leisure. Thank you, Roz Love76. Yeah. Naita said, I'm working on something. I'll get back out there soon enough. You're probably about to be snatched up. You know what I notice a lot of times when women stop looking and they start chasing their dreams? It's like out the blue. The, the man that matches that energy that you own show up for you. And maybe that's a key that somebody was supposed to get out of this life. You need to really get on your you're for real, for real. Your big, your grown woman stuff. You really do. And when you do, and you get in that energy, what happens in the universe, like attracts like. And before you know it, that man gonna come where you at. That's how that works. All right. And remember to take time and sit with yourself, enjoy yourself, and enjoy your life. Um, look at all the different roles that you have um, and responsibilities that you have in your life and really, really get serious about that um, and put that first. Okay. Self-growth personally and professionally at the moment. Great royal. That's great. Jazzy Lady Day, thank you. 
Ladies, there are so many handsome and professional men at the gym, especially early, early in the morning. When I'm minding my own business, they running after me. Great advice. See, this is why you got to have women in your ear. Some of you that's looking for men, go to the gym. Get a gym membership. Go early. Because nine times out of ten, those that's going there between four and six, maybe seven, are probably some high-value, very um, focused men. Yeah. Somebody said, I don't have the time and the energy to date five. <laughs> yeah, I understand that. You're going to have to make time, baby, because if not, you're going you're gonna to end up like the other lady that got five husbands. Because what y'all do, you, you meet a man, and then you're exclusive with him, and you don't know him. You only spend time with them. They connect. You ask you to marry, you say yes. And then after you marry, then you get to know the person. That's backwards. That's backwards. You ain't got time like that to waste. Learn that for time. Learn, learn them now. Put him in situations on purpose. Oh, let me go. I'm, I'm starting to. I'm, about to I'm, give, I'm giving. Put him in situations on purpose. Make sure your car break down and you need eight hundred dollars. Are, are y'all hearing what I'm saying to you? You need to get sick and be out of work some days and need help. These are all of the testings that you need to do before you give your, your heart and your emotions. It's easy for you to give your emotions over. You know, it ain't that, that hard. You a lover. But you, you have, this is your, your life, your future. And, and nobody told me, told me this stuff. Because what was modeled in front of me was, you know, my mom and dad had dated exclusively for several years, then they got married, and now they're 40 something years in marriage. That's back then. That ain't what we do now. In order to stay 40 years married, we got to go through all this, all these testings and checking the value, how they're thinking, and what are their ethics, their level of integrity. Because people are raised different now, times is totally different. Totally different. Can we continue a deep dive in this conversation in Patreon? Maybe OnlyFans, not Eta. Uh, if we get into the heavy sick stuff, it'd be OnlyFans. Um, but just relationship stuff, we can discuss in Patreon. Definitely we can. But this was on my heart and it was on my head and I wanted to share because I am very clear that we're in cuffing season and somebody about to be a dumbass. Let me say it one more time. We're in cuffing season and the spirit letting me know somebody about to be a dumbass. Mm-hmm. Don't do that. Mm-mm. 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 Get somebody else to do it. <laughs> And what you said, mm -mm, mm -mm. get somebody else to do that. T Man Vegas, how are you? Thank you for your badge. All right, I think I'm gonna post this on IG and Facebook because I think I said some things that are important, and I'm gonna leave it right here on IG. I do believe. All right, I love you. Wooly, love this the way I say you know. 